My name is Mirko. I'm part of the team of Tenissimo. You can see also Marco, which yes. is our... Uh, yeah, well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Technical director of Tenissimo. We are recording uh, the interview. Uh, we would like just a little bit to know a little bit uh, more about you, what you do, and uh, uh, yes, to understand also your expectations. We see that you are a very very popular, very active on uh, mm -hmm. social network and uh, very well appreciated, uh, not only in your country, but uh, uh, all over the world. So we are very honored to have you here. Thank, thank you very you. much for giving the time to participate. Yes, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. So first of all, just to not make something wrong, how do we spell your name? Mariana or Mariana? Mariana. Uh, very good, very good. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> then we are on the on the right side. Yes. Um, we were following you in the in the last period, and we saw that uh, your engagement in uh, your social engagement is growing. Is it a big yes. part of your life at the moment? Well, uh, honestly, I I try to put the first focus on my tennis and my practice, but also I uh, use my social media to uh, spread the words uh, about uh, Share the Meal app, app that I'm working on. It's a World Food Program app. Uh, it's for uh, feeding hungry people worldwide. And uh, each now and then when some situation happens or some, uh, not tragedy, but something in, in poor countries, uh, we are trying to collect uh, meals over apps and uh, food is uh, being uh, shipped to, to nations that are in need. So I kind of use also my, my social uh, media to spread the words about that. And of course, to, to post for uh, tennis fans. Uh, some content as well. Maybe we can only share your commitment uh, on that point of view. I mean, we all live in uh, countries with uh, we can have a nice life, so that your approach can only be shared by oh. the uh, team of Tennisimo, so to say. And now yeah. back uh, back to your tennis, so to say. How is it going at the moment? What are you doing? Well, uh, at the moment, I, I'm uh, on my last week of uh, pre-season, I would say. And uh, then I'm about to play two weeks on uh, 15K in Antalya. First, I plan to go to Tunisia for 25K, but uh, my grandma ended up in hospital and a bit tough situation uh, back home to travel last week. So I decided to postpone my season start uh, a bit later. So I will play those two weeks. Then I go back home for another week of practice. And then again on uh, 25K in Antalya or 60K to Germany. Oh, Germany where? Uh, Altenkirchen on carpet. Ah, okay. But carpet is your favorite surface. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly, so, yes. The four, the four yes, that's, the, that's the surface on which I started to play tennis. So it's kind of in my blood, I would say, from the first moments. In terms of <laughs> practice, we know that for tennis player, for professional tennis player, the period of December is very important to prepare the incoming year. Exactly. How do you split your practice between the different surfaces? Uh, well, uh, in usually in December, uh, when it's uh, off season and uh, when I take some days off after season is finished, and uh, then when I start my preparations, usually it's uh, two weeks or like ten days. It's more like the physical preparations. So I would say that the only maybe difference when I prepare, for example, for clay, more uh, aspect of the physical preparation is on legs, to have the stronger legs and to be more endurant on, on clay courts. So, and I also am working on the, my uh, spots that are a bit weaker on my, shoulder that's been injured for some period and I kind of take aspects on the things that I need to improve uh, as like strengthen it more so that's the only difference for me for example okay. 
I don't mind if I because here in Croatia we don't have uh, we don't have uh, many indoor hard courts. We have mostly clay courts, and I I try okay. to go more to play hard courts because I prefer to play on hard courts. And it's tough when it's raining because you know how is it and in Italy it's a similar weather. So it's tough to to be on the hard court all the time. Now in in December and in January I can play outside, even if it's a bit cold. But but I prefer it because then I can be on hard court. When it's rain, then I have to go indoor play. So it's kind of uh, mix mixing. But still, if you go two three days earlier to tournaments, you can adapt to to the surface. So it's not easy. Did you pre- did you prepare some specific new hit to uh, for the new season? Huh? A new hit? Well, I've actually been working more on my drop shots because now I go to play on clay and the surface is gonna be a bit wet because Antalya is also rainy, so it's okay. a bit advantage when you have a good drop shot to play on like wet clay. I would say so. That's what I've been working on. Very good. So we have, and uh, now we have a, a less serious question. We have, uh, we need your help because Marco has any, is not okay. able or he has a lot of issues in hitting the ball and a lot of times hit the ball with the frame. So how Ooh. can Marco avoid that problem? Well, I would say that uh, there is one good thing that you can order online. It's a pointer. You know, like a wooden, like wooden stick with a little bit uh, bigger head. It's good to okay. to get uh, into touch. Or I would say maybe just to to watch the ball all the time when you are hitting it, like when you are when it's coming to you and when you are hitting it. So all the time, keep the the eye on the ball. And I oh. think it's it's also that's, good. That's like- good. I, I believe our followers will appreciate your recommendation. There are a lot of uh, frames there on the group. <laughs> and do you do you do you follow also now the Australian Open? How was your perception about the event of last week? Uh, well, well, honestly, um, I kind of. I'm I'm not so much into Australian Open right now because uh, you know with the time difference and everything it's uh, tough to to follow the matches and I love to follow when it's live. I I try to watch some highlights of matches, but uh, of course I was following uh, some Croatian players playing and also my friend from uh, Bosnia, uh, Dea Hajela, she was playing uh, qualifying. So, but. Uh, Again, with this situation with uh, with Novak and everything that that's been going on, I'm really not not happy. And I'm, you know, the, the feeling to to watch Australia lost a bit. You know, I've I've lost like it was one of my favorite events. Also, I was always dreaming to play it and everything. But kind of after all of this, I'm not the biggest fan at the moment. Yeah, we understand. I believe that it's a shared feeling from uh, most uh, of the tennis followers around the world. I believe uh, around the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because again, now, tennis is yeah. a sport, you know, and the polit- politics should be aside. Politics should stay aside of sports. And I think Novak didn't meant to to do something bad to anyone. He just wanted to play like we all want. So. Ah, this is uh, something that uh, we 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 agree on it. I would say, yeah. At the moment, beside uh, uh, what happened in the last period, how do you see the tennis, the 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 women ranking? I mean, we have in tennis uh, the the men. Uh, we have a lot of stars, and by the women, it is difficult to find a real uh, star. How do you see the development in the future? Which is for you maybe the next, the incoming uh, star? Well, honestly, um, 
when when I think about uh, last year and US Open and uh, Raducanu winning the US Open, which was really surprising because she she didn't have the win on WTA and she came through qualies and win a Grand Slam, which is really huge thing to do. And I really I I'm impressed. But again, I I feel like still the older players are taking it over like i think that there is still maybe but i i can say badosa that okay. she might be i i like how she plays i like her i like her shots and uh, her mindset and she's not giving up uh, on any point i can say that that she might be the 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 future star i from all of them who are coming i think that uh, she kind of deserves it as well because I know her from uh, before. She was uh, struggling with also some injuries, some mental problems, and uh, I think that uh, she's on the good way. But again, I, I think that uh, still older older players are taking it over, and I still think that they can play on high level as they used to. And for now, I, I think Badosa could be be the one. In Italy, do we always dream, so to say, about a Grand Slam title from Camilla Giorgi? How do you yes. how do you rate her? Camilla Giorgi. Well, uh, I I know her. I I didn't know her story uh, since last year with uh, her sister and everything. What was going on? I I didn't had the spotlight on her. Uh, she's very she's very b beside tennis. She's very very beautiful, very fit player. From uh, other top hundred or even top ten, she she I can I can say that she's one of fittest girls on tour. She's really has uh, muscles and her shots are really strong. I think that uh, if if she focuses and when she wants to win the match, she can go far. She showed that uh, last year when she won the title. So I I, I believe that she can do in future. Uh, Grand Slam, I believe so. If if she's uh, in the good uh, good mood to win a lot of matches, not to win one and then I'm okay, I won, I don't need to win, you know, not to be in the mood, like to have intention to 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 win it. I think she can do it. She sure. has everything, but it's just I think matter of mental state in that moment. We are really impressed, uh, Marianne, about your preparation. You know the. <laughs> Uh, very, very, very well. And since you know it very well, now one um, last question and uh, not a serious one. Okay. You know that in Italy we have um, at the moment a, a good, a good, a very good uh, team in terms mm -hmm. of uh, players. You know Matteo Berrettini, Yannick yes. Sinner, Fabio Fognini. But the most important question is which, who do, do you prefer, Matteo Berrettini or Fabio Fognini from the aesthetical point of view? Well, definitely, yeah. Yes. Uh, I said that I definitely go with Fognini because uh, to me he's a special, special person on court, off court, and I think sometimes he can act on court a little bit bad, you know. But he's entertainment on tour, still. And uh, Berrettini, he's a good player, uh, young and has good perspective, but I still. Choose for him. Okay, very good. But Thank you very much for your opinion, to, Mariana. When it comes to, to quality uh, and uh, for the future stars, I, I can say that uh, Musetti, Lorenzo, he's also on the good way to, mm. to be a good and top ATP player. Yeah. yeah, we expect a lot this year from him. He started very well the 2021 season. And then yes. he had a little bit a loss of performance, uh, but I believe we believe it will come back this year. So yes, a lot of experience. Yes, definitely, definitely. So Mariana, we thank you very much for uh, for your uh, participation. Uh, thank you. Maybe you can say to our team, uh, our followers, ciao, ciao, tenissimo. And uh, yes, we thank you, okay. thank you again for your uh, for the opportunity. No problem. Ciao, ciao, tenissimo. Thank you very much, Mariana. Thank, Thank you. you. All bye. the best. Ciao, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.